Hello and welcome to this week's episode of The Insider, brought to you, as ever, by Vanishing Inc. My guests this week are, well, the co-founders of Vanishing Inc, Joshua J and Andy Gladwin, and this is a very special live episode. We're going to be taking your questions in a Vanishing Inc AMA. We're streaming right now on YouTube and Facebook, and we're, we're recording this too for the podcast, which will be out tomorrow. So just look for that on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. You've been sending in your questions this week, and I've kept them from Josh and Andy to keep this as fresh as possible. But this is live, so let's make it interactive. Please type as many questions as you like for Vanishing Ink or Magic in general, and we'll get as many of them as we can to Andy and Josh. Now, this is just a 30-minute show, so we have no time for pleasantries. Let's uh, bring in Andy and Josh, and we're going to kick off with this question from Stefan Hoogerworth. Now, Josh, if you'd like to take this one. Sure. Of course, it's not going to be as much fun, but are there any plans for online-only tickets for the Session and Magi Fest? It's a good question. And, you know, I think the first thing to say about all that is, you know, we are watching and monitoring things very closely. But um, one thing that's certain is we're prepared for all outcomes. So let's start with Magi Fest. Um, we made the announcement that Magi Fest has been moved from, from its usual time in January to May, May 7th weekend. Um, and if you go to the website, you'll see that you have a choice. You can then attend in person with very limited access in person attendance or online. Um, the only thing that's changed since we made that announcement is we're not sure we're going to be legally allowed and, and that it's safe for people to come live. So. We'll make that determination when we see what's going on with the vaccine. So I guess I'm rambling. In short, the answer is yes. We absolutely will have ways for you to attend online, and we have plans to make it really, really cool and do things we can't do live. But we hope it's going to be a hybrid. Thank you very much. Next question, uh, Mr. Andy Gladwin. This is from Oliver Meach. And he asks, when can we expect to see a higher proportion of female and BAME magicians in the lineups at the Session and Magi Fest? Wow. Starting right in with the, uh, the difficult question, but it's actually really easy to answer for us because you can expect that ongoing as uh, hopefully you've expected it in the past as well. Um, we really believe that uh, every great magician has a place on our stage, regardless of sex, background, race. There's, there's no... Um, there's no consideration of that for us. We want the very best magicians on our stage and we're happy to feature it. In fact, with regards to um, our way of kind of helping to create as many great magicians as possible, uh, Magic Fest and the Session both have uh, youth scholarships. So we're bringing in young magicians and uh, they can come for free and you can apply on our websites. And this is a really great way of us helping the community uh, starting with the younger magicians. So the thing I'm most proud of with that, for example, is Magi Fest this year. I think we had 20 or 25 young female magicians uh, attending the Magi Fest for free. So we're doing what we can and we hopefully uh, can keep that going and I have no doubt we will. Fantastic. As we were talking, Jamie Badman asked whether the content from the online sessions was going to be available after the event. Joshua? Yeah, so... Um it's going to be available for those who purchase the tickets to watch after the event. If you register for Magic Fest of the session, you'll have those things, but it will never be for sale. That's not fair to the performers. Okay, fantastic. Uh, next question is from Heather. Uh, Joshua, what is the biggest challenge the magic industry faces, and how are you tackling it? I mean, yeah, that's an interesting question. If by the magic the industry, you mean the magic marketplace, which is, I think, what we're focused on today. That's probably a more zoomed in question. I mean, issues magic faces might be exposure or, or you know, magic on TV or YouTube. But um, the magic marketplace, we talk about a lot, the, the challenges that are faced in the marketplace. And it's all about helping customers, helping our community find the really good stuff because I absolutely dispute the idea that a lot of magicians say, oh, it's all junk coming out. Well, it's not all junk coming out. There's really exceptional things coming out all the time. Johnny Thompson just gifted us with his lifelong work. Um, Pitt Hartling just gifted us with the really important memorized deck book. All in the last five years, you can you could name more books, more tricks than you have time to study. The problem is, alongside all those 
fantastic, superb product are lots of junk. And so I would say to Heather, what we're trying to do, we don't always succeed, but we're certainly trying, is we are trying to help connect you with product worthy of careful study. When I write our ad copy, I use that a lot when I'm, I really like a product. It's worthy of your careful study. I try to speak to you guys in terms of like, this is an investment. This is something you will read and read again. Um, I'm just watching the comments as they come in. It says, uh, illusionist is the problem with the magic industry. I mean, you know, this kind of this kind of talk is, is bullying and, and um, we sort of just feel like we try and be on our own island. We try and be the best. And we're watching what the competition does, but we're trying to be helpful to you guys. And it's really just about staying in our lane and, and trying to be the best. Fantastic. Uh, the next question is from Gordon Mayer and uh, Andy. Why don't you tackle this one? The ability to post questions on your product listing is great. However, very few of the answers are worthwhile and many of the questions are redundant. Do you consider it a success? And what, if any, are your criteria for accepting and answering questions? Yeah, what a great question. Actually, Damien, uh, maybe you should stay on for this because the whole community questions idea was your idea. And um, despite what Gordon said in his question there, I think actually the questions and answers are very useful, um, but I'm gonna come back to how we can make them more useful in a second. But the whole idea of the community questions is that people can post what's on their mind about a trick. You know, does this work in an impromptu environment? Does this work in uh, in a stage show? And instead of just us giving answers on our um, customer support, which we will always do, this way, the whole community can answer and we can all help each other out, which is a big part of what Vanishing believes in. Uh, but I guess what Gordon was saying is some of the answers are not great and some of the questions are not great. Uh, and that's because the magic community is a whole mixture of skill sets and abilities and backgrounds. So yeah, we do need to actually do a better job at helping focus the good answers. And we've actually just this week, uh, it's perfect timing that you mentioned this, just this week we've made quite a few interesting changes to the community questions thing. Uh, and we have one more change planned. But the main change that we've made is Vanishnik official answers, if you can call them that, uh, and creator answers go to the top of any question. So if question has 20 answers from the community, uh, if the creator answers, theirs goes straight to the top and you see the little star next to it to say it's the creator. That I think will really help ensure that most questions get answers that we know are truthful and factual. But also we monitor all the questions and answers and as often as we can, we, uh, we tidy them up and delete them if they're incorrect and let the customer know as well. That's kind of an important part of this. So the short answer is we think we uh, we think we have the perfect solution now with the creators, uh, but we have one more idea as well, which we're going to start allowing customers to rate the questions and answers, and that will be really useful. Fantastic. Uh, we've just had a question in live from uh, Joshua Carstens, and he wants to know what can we expect from Black Friday this year? Joshua. Um. Are we, I want to check with Andy. Can we say anything? Hello? Hello? Hello. Yeah. Um, I don't know that we're ready to spill exactly what we've got. I'm actually in the Vanishing warehouse right now. This is the office part. Out there is the warehouse. And I am looking right now at a monster table of giveaways that we're doing. As you know, we like to give not only discounts for Black Friday, but then pack it in with free magic. And I don't think we're ready to say exactly what it is, but let me tell you, it's by far and away the best um, sale we've ever done. We're calling it the Big Friday sale this year, and um, we've been working on it since, I think, three or four months now to get ready. So I, I hate to be a tease, but I think that's all we can say. Yeah, you know what? It, let's say the one thing, that it, it follows a similar format to our previous Black Friday sales, but every year we try and make it better, and this year not to kind of you know, tease too much, but I, I think we actually have made it better with better deals and better giveaways and better magic. Um, yeah, so I, I don't mean to uh, sabotage this, but um, my friend Nancy, I want to give a special shout out to her. I see her in the comments right now. Hi, Nancy. Nancy comes to our conventions, and it's always great to see her um, on all coasts. But she's asked a really good question that's related to Black Friday and business stuff. Um, and I want to tackle this because I think Andy will have something to say on this too. She says, love your site. Would you consider a reward program for frequent purchasers, maybe a discount or special pro 
promo code uh, for purchases over $100. So I actually think this is, this is really useful in this format because um, we have a lot of internal discussions over this and I want to hear what you guys think. Um, where I come out on this and in the past, the reason we've been gun shy to try it is that I just think that a lot of these programs are tough to manage and I have watched our competition try them and they almost always, I'm not gonna name names, they almost always fizzle out. But it's really important to us to take good care of you guys. And the fact that somebody like Nancy would mention this means that maybe I'm a little off and maybe you guys really want something like that. So please put it in the comments if you think that that's something you would like. Um, yeah, yeah. Let's let's be open about this. Actually, there's a divide, a friendly divide within our company. I think <laughs> it, and I saw your email, email uh, ears prick up, Damien, because I know which side you're on. Um, but, um, I, I want to do this um, kind of um, program for uh, frequent purchases, um, and Josh is in many ways, I believe, right that it can get complicated. So I'm on the side of I want to find a great way of doing it that thanks our customers for staying with us. But yeah, I'm also understand where Josh is with wanting to make it simple. Yeah, so, I mean, it, it, you know, from my perspective, and, and I, I mean, maybe this is inside baseball, maybe this is fascinating to you guys, because this is the sort of thing we discussed. Like to me, to add in like, hey, for every amount you purchase, you get a vanishing ink point. And if you have enough points, you could get this much off a of download. But then what do you do? when we launch a campaign that is already buy two downloads get one for so now it's like if you're in the members club you get this sale but this sale can't be combined with that one and you know you see what that looks like in online retail when it doesn't work it's just that the message gets really muddy and i think that we try i hope you guys see it we try to pass on savings to you all a lot um so i just don't want it to get muddy but i'm certainly open to it um, David's clicking buttons. Sorry, I, I clicked a button and it, it, it didn't work, but it was a good question um, from, uh, I'm not very good at names, Jorge, Jorge, Anido. If you guys could, and you can both, you can pick one each. If you guys could suggest one or two ideal effects as gifts for an intermediate card person, what would they be? Good question. Josh, do you want to go first? I want to think of a good one, so I'm happy to go first just a second. Um, okay, I got mine. Uh, it's an oldie. We're gonna go. We're gonna dig deep. Um, we published a book very early on um, called One Degree by John Gustafaro. And what strikes me about your question is you asked for an intermediate card recommendation. That is that hits right at one degree. There's nothing super challenging. I don't believe there's much in the way of palming or shifts, but it does use breaks and flip cuts and basic sleight of hand. But I always, when people ask for a gift recommendation, I always, always, always move toward a book or like a compilation download because you're getting so much more value. If you get somebody a trick and it doesn't hit, it's just that they don't like it, they don't do an assembly, they don't do this, they're not gonna use it. But if you get them a book like One Degree, I promise you they're gonna come away with a lot of amazing stuff. Mr. Gladwin. I'm going to give two. Uh, the first one is actually the Marksman deck. Uh, it's an old release from Luke Germain, but if you're an intermediate card magician, combining the Marksman deck with intermediate card skills, you get a miracle uh, set of routines, not just one trick, but a whole routine you can do. Uh, but my other one is slightly cheating because it's not card magic at all, but it's less is more. This new trick that we uh, we have on the site. Uh, I've been playing around with this. Josh has been playing around with it, but it's, it's not a card trick. But it's the kind of thing that card magicians would love, and it's just something you leave around your house and you show guests when they're uh, when they're in your house. It's just a really cool trick, so I recommend that too. Fantastic! Um, if everybody, just as a quick uh, sidebar, if everybody watching could like or share this, then more people will see it and more people will get the uh, the answers from Josh and Andy. So that would be great. But we have got a very technical question. Uh, and I think Josh is probably the best for this. Uh, the streaming video system, this is from Gordon Mayer again, the streaming video system you have for the masterclass sessions is quite impressive. Can you talk a little bit about how it was built and what it runs on, Joshua? Yeah, I can speak to this because I, um, as you know, I do all the back end work on the site. So if you're using Big Sur, if you're a beta tester like I am, you're going to make a lot of good um, interface with it. Now, well, I I, so I want to be clear, I code in C Sharp. So it's very important to recognize that when the bandwidth goes to the hard drive synthesizing, when with, you, how do we do that? 
Can what? We, can we mute? Right. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know anything about that. That's more of an Andy question. Uh, yeah, it's, a, it's actually a fully custom written system. Uh, I, for obvious reasons, can't go into too much detail, but um, I, what I will tell you, it's a small part of a much bigger system that we developed for the conventions. It's because we have major FS in the session uh, are coming up live. Uh, you know, we'll need to do them online for, for some people. So I just took a small section of something that we wrote for that and I spent oh, probably months. Uh, th these guys here were fed mm -hmm. up. <laughs> going, Let's test this, we need to try this. Um, so it's just a small part of that. Um, but it's, yeah, it's, it's custom written. And uh, the whole idea of that system is we wanted it to be interactive. It's not just a, a video where people just sit and watch a lecture video. We wanted it to be people could comment in real time and we could bring them in. So uh, there's a lot, lot of moving parts. Uh, I'm afraid I can't go into detail of what they are, but uh, there's a, a few off the shelf things with uh, a fully custom written system as well. So it's a, a lot of technical stuff. Um, can we talk about one thing I keep seeing in the questions, which is uh, people applying for, want to apply for jobs to work? Yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to touch on this too, yeah. What a massive honor that so many people have saying. Yeah. Somebody said they want to do the interview right now. Can we look them in? Can we, bring, can we do a live interview? Uh, we don't. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's a, a great question. And one, you know, our inbox is, is flooded with, with requests for people who want to um, work for us, which yeah, is so kind. Uh, I'll give one tip of what we're always looking for when people contact us is we're looking for people with specific skills. Um, often people just email us and say, I'd like, to, like a job to work with you. Um, but they never tell us what specifically they do. So the people who work for us are experts in their area. Damien right here is an expert in marketing and we have customer service experts, we have video editor experts, and that's the way uh, to get a job with us. Right now, if you're a programmer, I wanna hear from you, uh, especially if you are a C-sharp developer for sure. So that's what we look for when somebody applies for yeah, a job. Yeah, and we also, I think we'd add just to be very specific about it because maybe this could turn out to be a great opportunity. We love our team and we treat our team like family. We are all very close friends. We hang out on and off hours. Um, so if you think you'd be a great fit, that is uh, interesting and specifically if there is anybody in the Northern California area looking for a position, we certainly would take it very seriously um, in our warehouse here to be on the team to do a variety of things here. So um, we love people with magic knowledge and that makes it so much more fun because we're always doing stuff between things. So yeah, um, I'm glad that you brought that up and I'm glad that so many people have asked. We're truly, we're truly honored. And Damien, sorry, I know I'm jumping in. Uh, do your job here, sorry. Um, but uh, John Green uh, also, uh, he's, he's commented on this a few times. I just want to answer it. Uh, he said he's booked for the session. Uh, is it still going ahead? I mean, we, we can't answer that right now, I'm afraid, John, because it's out of our hands. It's in the government's hands as to whether we will be meeting in person or how many people will be able to. Um, but check out the site because we give our full plan of what's going to happen in all situations. You know, if, if the world is a it's fully back to normal, you get that. But if it's not so much, then you know we have a, a five-step plan and it's all listed on the site. So please read that. If you have any concerns, you can email us and we'll get back to you. Thank you very much. I was actually going to ask that, but it's fine. Oh, we'll move on. Oh, trust me, trust me. Um, pa Paolo Fontanelli has a question for you, Andy, and you, Josh. So we'll kick off with Andy's first. Don't know whether you can uh, share this. He wants to know, when will the boy who cried magic come out because he can't wait to read it? Oh, that's really kind. Uh, I have no idea what the... Uh, I don't know. I, I can't talk about it. <laughs> uh, okay. soon, let's just say soon. Uh, soon. soon. Uh, there's a few more pieces of the puzzle we have to put together, but we are working so hard and so quickly on it. I uh, Joshua, also from Paolo. Can you talk a little bit about Six Impossible Things? How was it structured? Which tricks from your repertoire were you performing? And from Joshua Carstens... I read somewhere there will be a magician's release of Josh's Six Impossible Things. When can we expect this? Oh, um, I'm touched that you would ask. Let me try and take those in part. So um, how is the show structured? So this was really fun. This, this was an experiential magic show. So basically people come to a basement in Manhattan. They sit in a circle. I'm nowhere in the room. The lights go out and they hear my voice, and that's how the show starts. So the first trick is done in the dark and in the round. Then they get up, they walk to another room, and the next trick is done standing and surrounded. Then they go into another room and they sit, and they watch more, in, more or less in a, a standard magic show way. And we go in six different environments to put magic in the best environment it's suited for. 
So um, that's the format. Are there any tricks from my repertoire? Well, that's the cool part. Um, Virtually every trick except for one was custom designed for that show, which is sad for me because I can't really use the stuff out of it. The one and a half exceptions to that are if you're familiar with my Trojan deck trick where I shuffle a deck and they shuffle a deck and all the cards match. We found a way to do that on the floor in the round in the show and it looked really cool. And the other um, happy trick out of that is um, if you've seen me do the t-shirt trick where I write stuff on the t-shirt the and some magic things happen, that was developed for Six Impossible Things, but I've done it on television and I do it live in my shows now. So <clears throat> um, that's that. As to when it's coming out, um, I can't say when, but I can confirm it's been filmed along with a lot of additional content. We're working on a really cool box set where you get a lot of stuff you get a custom deck of cards and a pocket square and really cool things you you would only see or understand if you see the show live and then you'll have a live recording of the full show you can watch with your full family fantastic um a quick question came in that i'm going to have the audacity to answer james hallward wanted to know about uh, an any card at any number that I shared on our Facebook page last week, uh, it was Jason Ladani, um, who's the magician you can't remember, and it is not available to exchange for money just yet, but Jason said it may be sometime in the future. Now, Andy, what's Hello. next? Go on, sorry. I'm just saying hi. Oh, okay, hi. Uh, what's next for the masterclasses? Will it continue if the world turns back to normal? Uh, what's next is two of our favorite magicians. One of them has already been mentioned today, uh, but December we have Guy Hollingworth, who is uh, mutually both mine and Josh's uh, favorite magician. Uh, and then after that, it's John Gustaferro, who uh, we love. We published his One Degree book and we're excited to have him uh, join us for four weeks. Will it continue when it gets back to, when the world gets back to normal? Absolutely. I think we have found a format here that we love being a part of and that the attendees of it love to be a part of too based on your feedback. So it's not going anywhere. I think it will only get better uh, as we uh, do more of these, but yeah, we're having so much fun. The next one starts in an hour, so I can't wait. Fantastic. Um, for quest a question for Joshua, and the name has been removed from my uh, Google Doc, but never mind, because it's a good question. It's become easier for creators to put their own things out, for example, through Gumroad or Kickstarter, etc. Mm -hmm. How will you continue to offer an advantage to those platforms, both for creators and consumers? Yeah, um, I think this is an excellent question. Um, whoever asked it, kudos to you, because um, you have pinpointed both a real challenge in the magic community for a company such as ours and a real crossroads for you guys if you're a creator. There has never been a time when it is easier to package up your own trick in a download or a booklet or, or a marketed trick and put it out yourself. And you know something, I can, I can say this with a clean conscience that um, we at Vanishing Inc. never want to get in the way of anybody pursuing the best route for them. And there have been times we've said, I think you're better off putting this out for yourself. Um, but let me give you a couple really big advantages, I think, to working with us. And that is curation. Um, you can ask our authors that we work with and our creators. Uh, it's not always roses, but we make the tricks that come to us better. I think that if you ask some of uh, the creators of our best-selling tricks, Amaze Box and, and My Own Balance, the tricks went exponentially better by having people on our team work with designers and prototypes and, hey, have you ever thought about this or can we reinforce this to make it stronger? And then the product that comes out is better for the consumer. Um, I think that, um, why are you saying classic Josh, George? I, I'm saying you made balance better. We've got an internal chat going. That was that was a compliment to you. I don't let's know bring George you're... on right now. Let's have a let's see him say that face to face. Uh, can I add one other thing? And I agree, by the way. It's it's the fact that we have our experts. You know, we have a team of experts, and they can help bring a trick to life. Right? Whether that's uh, George helping to produce a balance in the best way it can be, uh, the marketing team marketing better than um, than you might be able to by yourself, um, and the tech side, the packaging side, it's all about bringing the experts in, in my mind. Fantastic. Um, this is quite a long question, but it's really good. 
Um, when Vanishing Ink first started, your selection was much more curated. Today, you're selling virtually everything that comes onto the market. As a result, VI no longer stands out as a place where only the good stuff is available. Have you considered either returning to being more selective or perhaps creating a subsection where products aren't just listed the same way that the distributor describes them? I'd like to once again rely on VI to filter out the junk, but it doesn't feel like that's still happening. Now, I know that Matt, who does filter out the junk, is going to be annoyed by that, but Andy, do you want to answer the question? Who is on the live chat as well? Actually, um, I'm going to say this in the nicest possible way, Gordon. Uh, I think you're you're incorrect um, because we filter about half of the magic that comes through our desk as far as uh, from wholesalers distributors is filtered out and about another I'd say 20% of that is actually not fully featured on the site you can search for it but it's just not prominently featured so we do curate now we don't curate as much as we used to in the first five years if there were 100 products out, we would add one to the website, uh, maybe even 200, we'd add one in 200. And the reason we can't do that anymore is because as our customer base has expanded, so has the customer base's level of interest. So now we may have a family entertainer shopping who is very specifically looking for um, a, a specific kids trick or something like that. And we also have a card collector who's looking for a new display case. So we can't filter out as much as we used to because if we did, we wouldn't be able to do all the cool things that we get to do because we need customers to help allow us to do these cool things. So um, I say politely, we do curate a lot more than you uh, you believe we do. Um, but I also say uh, the stuff that listed is we stand behind. Uh, and if we accidentally let something slip through the net, tell us because we will review every product uh, again if you feel like we've missed something along the way. And Fantastic. We've got to... finally, just one last thing, actually, I'll talk about uh, is our uh, satisfaction guarantee. We are the only magic shop in the world, um, and I don't want to make this too salesy, but the only magic shop in the world that has this satisfaction guarantee. So if you're not happy with your purchase, well, you can still purchase in absolute confidence because we will make it right. It's a guarantee. We're nearly out of time. So can we do a quick answer for this, please? Irving Quant has just asked, serious question. With the large amounts of magic in the marketplace, what are you doing to be able to help in having so much content erode over time and be forgotten? Example, think of old magic products from the 90s that were amazing, but few people know about now. Such a great question. And Irving, you have some great downloads on our website and you produced some great magic 10, 15 years ago. So uh, this is a perfect opportunity to talk about those quantum mechanics. Check it out if you want to see some incredibly difficult but incredible magic. Um, yeah, I would add to that that I, I think it's a great question, and we think about it all the time. You know, Andy and I will sit around and go, hey, remember this lead? That was a great trick with the pencil, and nobody's doing it anymore, and Copperfield did it on TV. And, I mean, it's too numerous to even name, but we go back and relicense a lot of those old things. We have some new books coming up that are actually relicenses of books that have been out of print for 20 years. Um, and we will often highlight, like, I mean, a recent example is, um, I forget the name, one of you guys will remember, but um, Henry Evans has this fabulous trick that came and went with no fanfare, where- Risky bet. What's that? Risky bet. Risky bet, where you um, you take a dollar bill out of your wallet and you put it under your shoe and you say, I'm gonna bet you five bucks or 20 bucks if you make it with that, that this trick goes right. And then you have a card picked and you fail to find the card, but then they look down and under your shoe, the dollar bill you put down there, your hands haven't gone near it, has changed into the card. That's an example of a trick that came out 10, 15 years ago, nobody looked at, but that we really re-promoted and got behind. So um, Irving, if you if you see an old trick that you think is worthy of re-promotion, be sure to let us know and contact us. That's, we're all about that. Fantastic. Andy, we've got about 45 seconds left, but this question's great from Punk BMX. He wants, or she, wants advice for someone who is a hobbyist, who wants to show people magic, but is worried about messing it up. How do I change this? Yeah, that the answer to that is to perform more and more for people you trust. And actually, that's not always your family and friends, interestingly. I find the people who are most familiar with you are also uh, most comfortable just kind of trying to, to, to mess things up along the way. So um, colleagues are great. Um, people that you you know, but not know kind of intimately who, you know, you still have a bit of a formal friendship with. That kind of thing is uh, the time to work on new magic in my eyes. It makes you more comfortable. Josh, is that, are you laughing because I said formal friendship? Because that is a weird thing to say. 
No, I, I, I'm, I'm smiling because I thought that was a really good answer, friend. Oh, thanks, friend. Oh. Um, and you guys, thank you so much. This has been a real treat. I, thanks for the seriously heavy questions. I hope we answered them to your satisfaction. I see a lot we couldn't get to in the, the comments. So what I would say to you is I've really enjoyed this, and I think we should do it again soon. Yeah. I was just about to say, the, the more of you, I know I've asked once before, but if you could do a couple of likes, a couple of shares, more people will get to know about it, and that would make it easier for me to persuade Josh and Andy to do this again. I think the questions have been fantastic. Um, I'd like to thank Josh and Andy for taking part and agreeing to do this. They didn't see any of the questions. Oh, I was waiting for that one. They didn't see any of the questions beforehand, so this has all been on the fly, and it's been interactive and live. Thanks for the people that have joined in the chat. And... Um, all I'd like to say is I hope you'd enjoyed it and uh, it'll be out on the podcast tomorrow and we always end for anyone that listens to The Insider with this. Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye.